the Sawamura household. Can we get some Daichi slice of life, please? This ringtone reminds me of Silent Hill 2. Where else would I be going? The dream? Turns out all of IQ was just Daichi's dream. I bet you there's someone out there who actually holds that theory. What is happening to Daichi's psyche? <laughs> Imagine. Happy New Year. But at least you get the benefit of waking up and knowing that everything you have is real. Karasuno exists and it's great. I don't know what that meant. I hope that I explore that more. Some theories that jumped to mind. One, Daichi was alone, or maybe he felt alone for a long time. He had his teammates, but he's been the, the spiritual emotional anchor of the team way before any of their successes. That's gotta have been lonely. Maybe that's him flashing back to a previous state. Alternatively, he's a leader and being a leader is not easy. I think it can be a lonely role. Or I mean, the most optimistic or best interpretation of it in terms of its wholesomeness. Sometimes you dream about losing the things you love the most because you love them so much and he obviously loves what he does and he loves Karasuno as he should definitely not alone I mean, look at this look at this it's the opposite episode 9 everyone's night could it be that we're taking a break from volleyball could this be a slice of life episode it's been so long oh man that would be so great senpai's day off I, I did this with a friend at a shrine. It was really nice. Something really nice about it. <laughs> I also did this in Korea. I got prosperity this year. Prosperity and growth. That's sweet. Pretty sure the gods love dogs too. If the gods don't like dogs, then they're no gods of mine. <laughs> Isn't there a thing like in Japanese lore where foxes are guardians of shrines? Or is that just Persona 4? True. True. Nice one-two punch there. Would you want the gods to interfere in your game? I mean, that's the whole thing. You want to do it on your own. <laughs> we not to just forget that. Oh, total rejection. Ouch. I'm not as like, I'm just going to wish for this victory from the gods. Oh, it looked like Big Bro wanted to have a, a beer with Little Bro. <laughs> I can't shake it. Playing different sports. It's kind of related to his dream, but it's not basketball. Tuna or some kind of mythological creatures where they just have to always return to the gym. All roads, all choices lead to gym. But you know Daichi's relieved, despite his tone. Right? They've a lot to be proud of. <laughs> this reminds me of March Comes in Like a Lion, burning fields, carrying everyone's hopes and dreams on your own shoulders. It's a burden, but also he's strong enough to pick it up. There's nothing wrong with feeling intimidated or feeling anxious. Like, the measure of courage is not absence of fear, it's what you do in the face of fear. I mean, they're all gonna have jitters, except maybe Hinata. If there's anyone who's just loving it, Hinata just needs to touch court. He just needs his feet on the court at all times. He just sucks energy out of it. My first part when I stayed in Japan was right next to Skytree. Looking particularly at you three. <laughs> <laughs> Behold this building, normal building.
They're still gonna do it. Daichi only has so much dedication and energy to making them hold still. <laughs> Yachi is taking it the hardest. Brothers, this is a big surprise. What is Ukai's surprise? That, that's really nice of him. That's so... Oh my god, what a treasure. They can have this for the rest of their lives. And there's so many places to choose from. Someone color corrected and did <laughs> After Effects. <laughs> it's high production value. Credit to Kai for doing this. You went above and beyond. You know they love that. What a great moment. From my freshman year of high school up until post-graduation, I think it was like nine or ten years we did this, me and my high school friends held an annual tackle football game around Thanksgiving, during the Thanksgiving holidays. And we're not pro football players, but even so, now and then, somebody's girlfriend would come and film it. And the amount of time we spent just <laughs> watching these clips of us dinking around on the field, amazing. Can't imagine what it's like for these guys who actually are good at volleyball and are playing real games. <laughs> Did someone say moving around? Did someone say vigorous exercise? The wastelands of Tokyo, imagine. That's charitable of him. <laughs> Part of bicycle. <laughs> I want to watch the whole thing. That should be an OVA. Throw it away, come on. That's many times it takes. <laughs> I'd, honestly, I'd probably do the same thing. Some people study, some people run, some people... Walk around and think about Kyoko's bath. Takes all types. Play volleyball. Story there. Those are tough sport, man. It's, no, it's legit. I agree. I agree. I value the scars I have from my near-death experiences. <laughs> More than I could ever value any tattoo. It's the story of your life. It just depends on where they are. Legs are a good place, I think. <laughs> and she is tripping over herself for just no reason. She's so confident. She's so she's quiet, but she I don't know. She has a lot of the team spirit just flowing through her veins. I think everyone can feel that on the team. And it makes her actions and outbursts even more meaningful, like the infamous flag incident which is still hilarious to me in some level it's so nice this episode just to see them in this context you know just kind of chilling even if they don't feel super chill wonder if there will be any scouts here is this <laughs> congratulations you are now in an anime just just whatever <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this fan service episode? Whoops. God said no. Should have wished for that in the shrine. He's gone. That's it. He was doing well for a second there. And getting in his own way begins. She caught the vibe. These inner inner city, inner school big meetups are always intense. Yeah, where's uh, our real rivals? Our parallel team. There they are. Got him. Today she's not the one to show it when it counts. Suffers privately. Can't believe we're here. I, I didn't like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. I didn't know what would happen now so fast. Are we actually going to do spring tournament? I thought maybe it might be a later season. 
みんな落ち着きがなくなるのは仕方のないことでもウカイ君は落ち着いて<笑>分かってるよ I wonder how well ウカイ slept Enjoy it Just enjoy the moment We're here We made it to the, the big, big stage You'll remember this day for the rest of your lives. It's hard like, to be that conscious and just take in the, the moment. Most of them are thinking about the next moment, which is the game. But what an honor. What a great experience. How many people get this chance in anything? You know Hinata loves it. He's thinking about his serves. Yeah, breathe it in. Breathe the air. There we go. There it is. Special for them too because they're only freshmen, right? Like, who knows? I mean, they might be here three times. Wow, I can't believe we're we're beginning. It's beginning. Absolutely no idea what to expect from the tournament except greatness. Look, I, I'm satisfied. You know, I wasn't sure we were gonna beat Alba Josai the second time. I was less sure we were gonna beat Shirtoizawa. Tournament championship seems perhaps out of the picture. Who knows if we even know? I mean, I don't know where this this season finishes at this point. I'll take what I have. I'll take all the the glory we've gotten. I want to see them play their heart, hearts out, and I want to see them have a lot of fun, and I want to see them give it their all without holding anything back and enjoying the moment. Of course, I'd be thrilled to see them win, right? But like always, it would have to be accompanied by the underlying wisdom, honesty, that's made their previous successes so great. This is one of the most distinct episodes for me in a long time. I actually was thinking recently, just to myself, as great as the show is, it could use more of this. Because I, you know, I like them so much, it's fun just to see them do non-volleyball things. It's fun to see their, their dynamics and their interactions. I mean, this is still very volleyball-centric, but it's different in that it's not on the court, right? They're living their lives, they're expressing their varying emotions, depicted in such a relatable way, too. I mean, anyone who's done anything on a, on a stage, or in front of people or competition knows this kind of apprehension going into it where you just can't can't stop thinking about it. You wonder if you've done enough. You run countless scenarios through your head about what could happen and there's sort of nothing to really do. And that period is often way more turbulent than the actual games themselves. You know, once you're on the court, hopefully if you've done your job, instinct experience will take over. You'll do your best. My parents at one point in their lives at least were both performing musicians. And while they've expressed different ways of dealing with this, both of them have expressed the, the exact same feelings. My father seems to go kind of the doom route where he's convinced he hasn't prepared enough. He's convinced he's gonna make a huge mistake, which is hilarious. And I guess fitting in a sense, because if you know him, you know he's an absolute perfectionist and that doesn't make mistakes and is certainly almost over-prepared when it comes to music. And my mother says she feeds on it. She feeds on this energy. But anyway, here we go again into battle. 